Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be carrying on from our last video where we actually added our W data that we're going to use for our previews. So what we're going to do is actually start to build our UI. So for this video we're going to be looking at building our people screen. So let's look at the mockups and see what this screen looks like. Well if you actually look at our people view here you'll notice that it actually lives within a tab bar so it actually has its own tab within the main um, application. Also on the screen as well you'll notice that it actually uses a navigation bar at the top so that you can add new users and it has a title and we also have this grid view where you can actually position people in this like two column layout so the first thing that we're going to do looking at our mockups here is we're actually going to set up our tab bar in our app so in our main app content let's actually set up a tab bar so we can actually create our people view and if you want to learn more about tab bars then check out my video custom tab bars in the swift ui sessions playlist so let's go back to our project and at the root of our project, which is this iOS take home project app, what we want to do is actually add this content view within a tab view. Cool. So by default, SwiftUI will actually create this view for you called content view, but we actually don't really need or want this view in our app when we want to create our views that we want to you know we want to have views that are actually more descriptive so we want to have you know a people view so what we're going to do is in our people folder let's actually create a new file called people view so within views the people let's create a new swift ui file and we'll call it people view cool So now, rather than having our content view, what we're just going to do is actually take this out and now we're going to replace this with our people view. And what you can do if you want to as well, is you can actually delete this file because we're actually not going to really be using it anymore. So let's just remove this. Cool. So if you looked at our designs in our mockups, you would have realized that our people view actually has a SF symbol and some text as well. So what we want to do now is on this view, we want to actually apply the tab item modifier so that we can give it our you know SS symbol and our text as well. So let's add this in. So on the people view, we're going to type out tab item and this is going to allow us to pass in a icon and some text. So in our symbols, if we don't have it already, we should have one called person because that's the ink icon that's being used here. And then underneath it, we're going to say text. And then we're just going to call this on based on designs home like so okay cool now that we've added this in let's actually just run this on the simulator to see what it looks like because you're not able to run this in the swift ui preview you should see now that you actually have your tab bar on the bottom of the screen and we also have our view as well so it's all looking good sweet so let's just dismiss that to create some more space all right cool so the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to add in our navigation bar at the top because if you looked at our designs you would have realized that we actually have this where we have the title and the plus button so let's look into doing this now so let's go into our people view and then within this view we're going to actually nest this text view for now within a navigation view so a quick way to do that is if you just hold down command on your keyboard and then click on text you should see an option called embed and that will allow you now to type out the custom view that you want to embed this view within. So in our case, it's going to be, in our case, it's going to be navigation view, like so. Cool. So now let's just run this on the preview. Okay, cool. So you won't actually see anything just yet, and that's because we've not actually applied the logic for adding in the plus and the title as well. But the next thing that we're actually going to do is actually give our view a background. So in our mockup designs, we actually do have a bit of a background where it's not white. So in order to actually do this, we're going to again embed our text view within a Z stack. So we're going to give our Z stack a view where it's almost the background color and then any other views will be overlaid on top of this view. So let's just click on this again and then we're going to choose embed again. And then this time we're going to choose Z stack. Cool. And within this Z stack, we're just going to type out theme dot background. And now you should see that you actually have a bit of a background color going on here. So it's actually different to the rest of the application. So notice how it's actually not filling up the whole space at the top here like it would be in our design. 
And the reason why that is, is because it's actually currently being laid out based on a navigation view space and the safe area layout. So in order to actually fix this, what we need to do is actually tell our background to ignore the top safe area layout. So let's do that now. Cool. And now you should notice that the background fills up the rest of the top of the screen, but not the bottom because we only specified to ignore the top. Cool. So now we actually need to apply our title that we have in our designs into our screen so you can see it in the navigation view. Now, when you're applying a title onto a view in the navigation view, you can't apply it directly onto the navigation view. You have to use it within one of its children. So in our case, we're going to apply this onto our Z stack. So let's go into our Z stack here now, and we're just going to say navigation title, and then here we're just going to type out people, and now you should see that appear on the screen here. So since we actually have our navigation title in now, the next thing we need to do to finish this off is actually add in our plus button. Now in order to do this, we need to add to our navigation bar a toolbar. So we need to use a toolbar to actually allow us to place items specifically within the navigation bar also. So let's actually add this one in together. So underneath our navigation title, let's just type out the dot toolbar modifier. Cool. And then within our toolbar, we want to use a toolbar item and tell it where we want to actually place it. So let's just create a toolbar item. And then the option that we want is we actually want this last one where you can actually specify the placement and the content within it. So for the placement, we want this to be the primary action. So what this will do is it'll actually place it within the top right hand side and also bold it out because it's the primary action on this screen. And then within the content, what we want to do is actually add in a button that someone can actually tap in order for us to actually perform some kind of action. So let's just create a button. And then the button action we're going to the button we're going to use is the one with the action and the label because we want to pass in our own custom view. So for the action, we're going to keep that empty for now. But for our label, we're going to use our SF symbol that we define in the symbols, and we're going to use the plus one and apply some styles onto it. So as you can see now, we've got our SF symbol on the screen and we've got our plus button with the automatic blue tint for us. And we've just literally just placed that in the top right hand side navigation. So if you also looked at our design as well, you would have realized that we actually had a column, like a two column layout for displaying all of our users. So in order to actually achieve this, we can't actually use something like a list or we can't use something like a VStack. Instead, what we're going to need to use is a lazy grid. So using a lazy grid will allow us to create a list with a two column layout. So let's actually define our columns within the top of this file. So within your file here, we just want to create an array of grid items. So we want to create an array of grid items which has two columns. So let's do that now. So what we're saying here is we're just creating an array with two grid items which to give us those two column layouts. Now let's actually create our grid and give it a fixed range of zero to five so we can just take and just show different pieces of text. So now what we want to do is when you're actually working with a lazy V stack, in order to actually make it scrollable, you need to actually add it within a scroll view. So again, let's just embed our text within a scroll view. So we're just going to choose embed and then we're just going to type out scroll view. And then now within our scroll view, we're going to actually create our lazy V grid. So you want to use a lazy V grid and not a lazy H grid because we want to layer our views vertically and not horizontally. So again, we're just going to choose this time. We're actually going to type this out and then we'll just copy this text within the scroll view. So I'm just going to type out lazy V grid like so. And then in terms of the columns, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our property here, columns like so. And then we don't actually need the alignment. So we're just going to take this out. And then for our spacing, we're just going to define 16 because that's how much spacing is within each item and designs. We don't need any pinned views because we don't really have any sections that we're going to be working with. And then we just want to hit enter on our content. So now we have our lazy V grid. So within here, we want to set up our for each where it will actually loop through the number zero to five and just display some kind of text on the screen so we can just see it on the, you know, Swift UI previews. So we're just going to do for each.
and then we're just going to type out our range so it's going to be 0 to 5 and then for ID this is going to be the dot self so we're just going to use the actual number as its unique identifier and then we're just going to type in here just item in and then now let's actually just copy our text in here And then we're just going to do a bit of string interpolation where we just put a number at the start, like so. Cool. So now in your Swift UI preview, you should now see that you actually have a layout that's not the exact same because we've not actually built a view, but we have a two column layout within our application showing the text hello world for each number that gets iterated through in our for each loop. So what we want to do now is actually build out our cell from our mockups. So if you actually look at designs, you'll see that we have an image and we have like some text as well. So it's actually broken up into two different things. So because of this vertical layout, what we can do is actually build this screen, well, build this view, I should say, using a V stack. So let's actually, let's actually just tackle our image bit first by just adding in a rectangle temporarily since we don't actually have the image stuff set up yet. So let's go back into our design. And then rather than having a text, we're just going to remove this because we actually want to start to build our cell now. And then we're going to just create a VStack. And then in terms of the spacing within the VStack, we're just going to add zero spacing because we don't want no space in between the items. And then within here for now, we're just going to create a rectangle. And we're just going to give it a fill of like blue. And we're also going to give it a frame with a height of 130. Cool. So now you should see your rectangles being laid out in the two column layout. So it's worth noting that this rectangle is just a placeholder for where we're going to actually place our image when we actually get to that bit. So the next thing that we need to add in is we need to add in our information to the bottom of the rectangle and our pill. So the first we're actually going to tackle is our actual pill first. Now in order to actually do this, because if you look at our design, we actually have our pill and then we have some text underneath it. Now to achieve this, what we're going to need to do is actually use another V stack within the current one that we're currently in now. So within this V stack underneath our rectangle, let's create another V stack. And then within this one, we're just going to start off by adding our pill. So this is going to be a text with some styles on it. So let's add this in and then we'll break it down. So now you should see that we just got a V stack with some text and some styling. So at the moment, it's just in the middle and doesn't really have our actual, you know, purple design styles on it. So what we're going to do now is actually add in some modifiers to make it look more like what it is that, you know, we're expecting. So what we've done is we just simply added in some a foreground color of white for the text to make sure that it's always white some padding around the actual text view so the reason why i didn't give this view a width is because the numbers may vary so we actually just want the view to just wrap around the size of the actual text rather than saying you are going to specifically be 50 pixels long so this will basically dynamically change and like conform based on the length of characters within this view. And then we give it a purple background and then we just clip it with the capsule. So it's now starting to look more like our design. So in our design, you'll notice as well that our pill is actually aligned to the left rather than within the middle. So what we need to do is actually give our V stack some kind of alignment. So we're giving our V stack an alignment, but you'll notice that it's actually not working. So why is that? Well, the reason why is because our text here this is actually the width of the actual view. So the problem that we've got here is only this much wide. So if we actually say to align it to the left, it's actually being aligned to the left within the context of this width. So it's not actually filling up the whole container view. So in order to get this to lay out on the left hand side, we essentially need to tell this view to basically span the whole container view and then set the alignment of this view to be leading. Now we can achieve this by simply setting the width on the entire V stack to be infinity and then telling it to lay out its content on the leading side. So let's actually just do this now. So the one that we want to apply this onto is actually our main container VStack here so that 
this V stack fills up the whole width of its container view. So on this con so on this V stack, let's just say frame, and we'll say max width, and we'll say infinity, and then we'll say alignment should be leading. And now you'll see that it actually positions it to the left hand side because now this container is filling up this whole width and we're saying that anything that's within it should be aligned to the left hand side so this view here okay cool so the next thing that we need to add is actually the name for our person underneath our pill so let's do that now so as you can see now our text is within the actual container for where we actually place our pill item so and it's aligned to the left hand side but one thing that um, I've realized is that our design here for our text like container view doesn't actually match our mockups. So you go to our mockups, you'll notice that it's actually got like a rounded rectangle on the whole view and it actually has some padding within it as well as a bit of a background color, which is what it currently doesn't have and a little subtle shadow. So we actually don't have the, you know, padding within this file. I actually, I know the padding because I'm the one who designed this. So if you're given the spacing and the padding, then you want to make sure that you use that. Now, if you don't have the spacing and padding, then just try to use your best guess when you're trying to like, you know, lay it out. And what we're going to do here is we're going to now apply this on to this view here. So on this container view that's holding our text, what we want to do underneath our frame is we want to basically give it some padding and our background. So let's do that now. So we've now specified that we want to have a padding horizontally of eight, so it pushes it, you know, away from the side and vertical as well. And we've also now got our background, so you can now see our background on that as well. So another thing that we want to add in, like I said before, is our clipped shape. So we want to actually give this whole view a clip shape of a rounded rectangle. Now, in order to do that, we want to apply that onto the actual V stack that's holding all the views. So let's just collapse this to make it easier. And then on this, we're just going to apply some styles. So let's do that now and I'll break it down. Cool. So now what we said is we're going to give this whole view a clip shape of around a rectangle with a style of corner, you know, continuous for the corner radius. And we've also added a brief little shadow onto it with a two pixel radius and a 0.1 opacity. And we just slightly move it down on the Y axis. So we get this like card effect. So this is looking more like our mock-up designs if you actually zoom out. One more thing I'd actually like to add in that we're missing from our designs is the padding on the left and right hand side because right now it's quite tight to the left hand side of the screen. So what we're going to do is actually apply that. So what we're going to do is actually apply that padding on to our lazy V grid so that the lazy V grid has the padding on everything that it contains. So let's just go on our lazy V grid, and then all we need to just do is type out dot padding on it like so. And now you'll realize that we actually have our padding where it actually pushes it out and it gives it a bit more breathing room than being stuck to the sides. So now if we actually just run this on the simulator, and as you can see, if you actually look at this and compare it to our designs, it's actually starting to look a lot like what we're meant to be building. What I want to do is actually just look at our Swift UI code for a second. And if I just expand this, you'll notice that we actually have a bit of a cold smell here. So we have actually got a bit of a problem here in the terms of that this entire view, although it does work and everything does look fine in our designs, it's actually quite difficult to navigate around. So it's not easy to actually, you know, look and see where everything is on the screen. So in the next video, what we're going to do is actually look at how we can extract our views and actually make them easier to read with a bit of refactoring. And we'll apply these concepts for future screens as well. So make sure you stick around for the next video in this course. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up as well as leaving some feedback to let me know, you know, what your favorite part of it is. Now, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.